So babe was just whinging. I haven't made a proper sausage rolls. You haven't. So this is my reminder to myself to make babe the best sausage rolls she's ever had. So there you have it. There was my video reminder to myself that babe wants me to make sausage rolls. So we're gonna make three different flavors with three different techniques so everybody can master the sausage roll at home. And I guess we better let babe decide what one's the best. All right, we're gonna start with the easiest one. All I've done is bought some great quality lamb and rosemary sausages from my local butcher, some puff pastry. Let's get stuck in. So for all these, we're gonna need an egg wash. I just like to use egg yolk. You can whisk whole eggs if you want instead. Super simply, three egg yolks in a bowl. Give it a little whisk so it's homogenous, and that's good to go. Simply grab a sheet of puff pastry, leave the backing on it. And you, you want this kind of almost completely defrosted, but not 100%, if that makes sense. And you gotta work kind of quickly, because you don't want this to completely melt. Take your sausage, run a blade down it, and remove the casing. Once you've peeled that casing back, place it on your puff pastry. And then we're gonna need a bit more of another one and fill up that last gap. Make sure they're nice and tight. So I reckon we're gonna get at least two, if not three. So we'll just keep filling these up before we start rolling. So next we're gonna to need to roll these. So take your puff pastry over till you'll almost close the gap and some egg wash so that we can seal it properly. Peel your backing plastic or paper off. Over she goes. Now run your knife along the pastry for the next one. Remove that side, and we'll use a little bit more egg wash just to make sure that that seam stays shut. So seam side down, and that one's good to go. The baking sheet lined with paper. A couple of different ways you can cut this. You could cut this in half, and you'd have two kind of nice sized sausage rolls, or you can cut them like I used to have them when I was a kid at parties, into individual bite sized pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. So sharp knife, straight down, and you'll end up with little pieces like that. Lay them out on your tray. So now we just need to egg wash these and then we're gonna to top them with a bit of oregano and we'll get them in the fridge to chill down before we put them in the oven. Into the fridge. All right, option two. If you've got a bit more time, we're gonna make our own filling. So we've got some pork mince, you want 80, 20 uh, lean to fat, sage and onion. We'll caramelize these, season this up, and we'll get rolling. So we'll start with our caramelized onions because we need them to be cold by the time we uh, put them through the pork mince. So two red onions, just nice and diced. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want a fairly small dice. So into a pan, a couple of tablespoons of uh, high temp oil. Once your pan's up to heat, onions go in. Good pinch of salt, some pepper. And we're just sweating them down. We don't want heaps of color here. We're not after a full caramelization. Okay, so that only took about three or four minutes. A little bit of color, some of the harshness taken out of them. Onto a plate and into the fridge to cool. So the sage, we've got a bunch of sage, which is always a really strange measurement to give people. And we're gonna chiffonade this nice and fine. Sage is pretty strong, um, it can be overpowering. Absolutely delicious, but can be overpowering. So don't go too crazy. How about we give you an exact measurement? So that's six grams of sage. So in a bowl, pork mince goes in. Sage, 10 grams of salt, which is slightly less than you'd have for a sausage filling. And our cooled red onions. Now you can do this with a wooden spoon, but it's much easier just to use your hand, to be honest, because you want to work this mince like you would a sausage mince. What that does is emulsifies the fat, and then the sausage should hold together better when it's in the oven. At this point, if you're concerned about the salt levels, either being too little or too much, well, if it's too much, it's too late, but if it's being too little, you can just take a little ball off, put it in a fry pan, and check for the seasoning. But this is what you're looking for. It all holds together. It's got a nice kind of tacky consistency and perfect for making the, uh, the sausage roll. So we're gonna wrap this into a cylindrical shape and then we'll fill it in the pastry. So to roll this or to balantine it, I think that's the correct term. Pull some cling film out. Oh yeah, you know it's sticky when it won't come out of the bowl. Put it on your plastic. I was being lazy, I was trying to avoid having to wash my hands again. It was inevitable. Uh, and you wanna get a rough log. Um, these sausage rolls I want relatively thick. Even it out, start rolling. And you want a bit over the edge so that you've got room to play. Go back the other way, cut that off, and then pull your ends tight. And this is where you can control how tight this is by how much you spin this around. We're not too concerned about it being tight. I just want it kind of 
even cylindrical and it's probably a little bit big to be honest so we'll unloosen it a bit and we'll just push the filling out so that we can thin it out of it the other option to do this if you don't want to use all this cling film is you can put it into like a piping bag and just pipe it out all right i'm going to pop that into the fridge just to chill down a bit all right this has been resting a while uh, and as you can probably tell we're going to make these a bit bigger so we're only going to get two sausage rolls from each of these so we're going to cut our sausage into three and remember the reason we did that was to try and avoid air bubbles. Place that down, make sure you get all the plastic off. And then just spread your filling out so it's even and fills to each end. So again, just avoiding air bubbles. We don't want air bubbles on this. So just squeezing it to stretch it. You don't want to break it apart. You don't want to lose that kind of, um, all that work you've done to keep it elastic and tight. And if you're doing this with a piping bag, you need to use the material piping bags, not the plastic ones. They just break because of the pressure that you have to use to push this out. And then just like last time, egg wash at where you think roughly the seam's gonna be, over it goes. Keeping it nice and tight, just like you're rolling a, uh, you're making a tamaki or a sushi roll. These uh, shop off puff pastries are really finicky sometimes. You've got like a really small window where they kind of work well. The issue is that they start to stick. So make sure you've got a, a fair amount of overlap on this one. You don't want it to break apart. So I'm looking at like almost it overlaps the whole way on the bottom. And then we'll run our knife down there. And there she is. Now we're just gonna cut these in half and you got a really nice lunch for someone. Bit of salad on the side. Ooh, delish. Onto a lined baking sheet again. And pretty simply, just repeat that process with the last two. And then just like the last ones, egg wash. And be generous with the egg wash because that's what's gonna make it all golden brown and crispy. And these ones, we're just gonna top with some black and white sesame seeds. Just like the last ones, into the fridge to chill for at least half an hour before we bake them off. All right, on to the last one. And it's not that tricky because of the filling. It's gonna be a bit more complicated because we're gonna make our own rough puff pastry. So let me run you through that really quickly first. So get your flour, salt, and ice cold cube butter into a bowl and rub it between your fingers. Add a dash of cold water and bring it together. Notice the size of the butter, it's still pretty large. Then onto a floured bench surface, you're gonna roll this dough out. You're gonna keep it nice and neat and tidy, and then you're gonna fold it into three. Cover this in cling film and into the fridge to rest for at least half an hour. After the half an hour, you're gonna pull it back out the fridge and you're gonna repeat that last step. Flower surface and roll it out, keeping it nice and neat and then folding it over three times. Back in the fridge to rest and then you're gonna repeat this whole step four more times. So now we're at the final stage of the pastry. It's time to get our filling ready and we'll get that chilling as well. So pork mince, thyme, and speck or bacon. So we're gonna start by dicing this. You'll take the skin off first as well if you've got skin. The style or the way we're gonna roll this is gonna be a bit more family style. So it's gonna be a bit bigger, designed to kind of slice at the table. But again, like all of them, you can kind of shape them the way you want. So nice, relatively small dice. And when I say sport, small, I mean like, like that big. All right, so the thyme, I've got this really nice big bunch of thyme here, and we're just gonna strip the leaves. So when thyme's really young with a, a soft uh, stem, you can kind of just cut through it if you want to, but once it gets to a certain point, you really need to strip it off. If you can't find fresh thyme, just use some dried thyme. All right, so that's about roughly a third of a cup of thyme in volume. Just run your knife through it. And then same as last time, into a bowl. 80-20 lean to fat pork mince, your diced speck, the fresh thyme the 10 grams of salt, and we're gonna go pepper in this one too. So I say 10 to 12 grinds of a pepper grinder. All right, time to get your hands dirty. Like last time, we've got a nice sticky sausage mince. Time to roll it up, cling film out. Let's see if it'll come out this time. Yay, you wanna. Now, like I was saying before, we're gonna do a family size one and then slice it after. This is something that I've actually never done before, but I saw a, a really awesome chef from the UK called Callum Franklin do it a while ago, and I've always wanted to try it. He's pretty famous for his pastries and pies and wellingtons. So we're gonna roll this up fairly tight. Unlike last time, I feel like we're gonna need a bit of, a bit of tension in this one. And a decent girth, roll it. Nice and firm. 
and back in the cling film and all this does is keep the ends nice and tight. So there you have it. Now we're gonna chuck this in the fridge to cool down and firm up before we roll it in our rough puff pastry that's almost ready. All right, our rough puff is ready, so it's time to roll it out. Pretty simply dust your board a little bit and then we're just gonna roll it out as even as we can. We want it about sort of three or four mils thick but I'll show you when we're there. If you've made this the day before, which is perfectly acceptable to do, you might wanna leave it out of the fridge for sort of 10 to 15 minutes before you start rolling it. And you'll see now that there's no kind of butter flakes left in this as well, it's what you're looking for. Now you don't wanna to use too much flour, but make sure if it gets sticky at any point that you do give it another little dusting of flour. So there you go, that's what we're looking for. About that thick, it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna call that two mils. Okay, ready to start filling. I am just gonna tidy up these edges. All right, our meat's been in the fridge for about an hour and it's actually a bit shorter than I thought it was. So I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit more. So cut your cling film off. Make sure you get all the plastic off and she goes. So we're gonna fold this one slightly differently. We're gonna bring it over and then we're gonna have an edge on one side that we're gonna crimp with a fork and then we'll trim it up. And then we can get as elaborate as we want with the decoration, but let's just start with the folding over parts. We just want to kind of figure out where our dough is going to meet. Mark that so we know. Egg wash, just make sure she sticks. Okay, so we're going to push that in quite tight. Then we're going to trim it off and we'll finish everything else on the tray that we're going to cook it in. So we're just trimming this off at this point. Doesn't need to be super neat because we will trim it again. Lined baking tray. We're going to carefully put her on. So again, just make sure you run the under, underneath of your hand in there so you got a really nice tight seal and then using a fork we're just going to crimp it okay we're going to trim this up once more just so we have a really nice clean finish and then we're going to egg wash the whole thing and don't be shy with your egg wash this is an optional step since we've got some excess we're going to try and put some of it to use so we're just going to cut some long strips we'll start in the center lay it over and then we'll just go either side of that. And then instead of using sesame seeds, we're gonna use some fresh thyme leaves. Finally, just some flaky salt over the top. And then like the other sausage rolls, we're gonna get this in the fridge for a good half an hour, just for that pastry to firm up again. All right, these have all been resting in the fridge, some longer than others. We're gonna bake these all off at 180 degrees Celsius. I reckon these will take about 20, 25 minutes, all the way up to this will probably take 45 minutes, but we're looking for a core temperature on the sausage meat of at least 75 degrees Celsius, which is about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's get them in the oven. All right, so these were almost ready, but I've noticed that the bottoms are probably not as crisp as I'd like. So what I'm gonna do, put them on a tray and then put them back in the oven so that the bottoms crisp up a bit more. No one likes a soggy bottom. Back in the oven, another 10 minutes-ish, just to finish off. So these baby ones, they're good to go. I am gonna remove them pretty quickly so that the oil that's come from the pastry doesn't get soaked up to the pastry. And the big boy, well, that's still got at least 15 minutes to go. Very good. And there she is. Now, like any meat, we've got to rest it for 10 to 15 minutes before we slice it so the juices don't run everywhere. We'll see what it tastes like then. All right, we best get babe in to taste. Babe, your saucy rolls are ready. What do you think? It's a lot of sausage rolls. <laughs> what is that? It's the family sausage roll, but we'll start here <laughs> first. Hectic. Okay. Now we've got tomato sauce or Fancy chutney. I feel like you're a tomato sauce type of gal, but I'd like your opinion au naturel first. All right. That's good. Mm. It's classic. Classic? Mm. That one looks good. Mm. What's this one? Ooh. So this one is caramelized onion and sage. That sounds delicious. Mm, I like that. Mm. The sage is pretty prominent, but I like the texture better on that one, I think. Now the big boy. Time for the big boy. I'm scared. Mm, me too. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> juicy. She's juicy. Pork is cooked lovely though. It smells amazing. 
Mm. Very herby. Mm. That's good. Very herba herbaceous. I like the little smoky undertone from the bacon. Honestly, the favorite for me has to go to these little suckers. It reminds me of going to parties when I was a little kid. Absolutely delicious. Yeah, I agree with you there. I just can't beat these. So good. Now you know all the different ways of making these bad boys. There's no excuse not to make one this weekend. Chuck me a like if you took anything from this video. Subscribe if you're not, and we'll see you next weekend for another recipe. Peace. Peace.